In this video, we'll derive the equations of motion for the two degree of freedom shown in the figure. This comprises a cart of mass big M sliding along a frictionless surface. And on top of the cart is a cylinder of mass little m. The cylinder rolls without slipping, known as the no-slip condition. I'll write that in here, no-slip. And uh, I've chosen the coordinates for this to be x1, which is the displacement of the cart, and x2, which is the total displacement of the cylinder, which means the displacement of the cart plus the displacement of the cylinder relative to the cart. We could have chosen other coordinates, to be clear. Um, I'm going to put them in here. This would be something I could call, say, delta. Delta would equal the deflection of the spring K2. And also we could describe it in terms of the rotation of the cylinder, which we could call theta. Now, the no-slip condition implies that delta is equal to r times theta. This is to say that the time derivative of delta, delta dot, is equal to r times theta dot. Right, so we're going to use Lagrange's equations to solve this, and the first order of business is to um, set up the kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy, which we'll call T, is equal to the kinetic energy of the cart, which is one-half times big M times x1 dot squared, plus the kinetic energy of the cylinder. Well, the cylinder has both translational kinetic energy, since it's translating, and it also has rotational kinetic energy since it's rolling. We need to include the effects of both of these. So what does that look like? Well, the translational kinetic energy is simply one-half times little m times x2 dot squared. And the rotational kinetic energy would be one-half times, we'll call it j0, the, mo the uh, rotatory inertia about the, the point zero, its center point, times theta dot squared. And I'm going to write up here, use blue for this, that uh, for a cylinder, J0 is equal to mR squared divided by 2. I'm also going to write up here that delta, which is equal to R theta, can also be written as uh, x2 minus x1. Therefore, delta dot would be x2 dot minus x1 dot. We'll call this equation 1. We'll call the blue one equation 2. And now we can simplify the kinetic energy as follows. That's equal to 1 half times m x1 dot squared plus 1 half little m x2 dot squared plus j0 from here, we can write as mr squared divided by 2 times a half is mr squared divided by 4 times x dot squared could be written as x2 dot minus x1 dot divided by r quantity squared. And that comes from equation 1. Let me just write that here from... Okay. We can cancel the r's, by the way. r squared cancels r squared. All right, and now for the potential energy, we'll call that V. That's equal to 1 half times spring 1, K1, X1 squared, plus 1 half K2 times the deflection of spring K2, which based on our coordinate system is X2 minus X1 quantity squared. And we'll label these 3 and 4, respectively. Okay, let me also write Lagrange's equations up here for you, just to remind us. Lagrange. Lagrange's equations. And this can be written in this case as the time derivative 
of the kinetic energy partial V with respect to QI dot plus partial V partial QI. And that's equal to the generalized force, big Q sub I. So the first equation of motion can be found with taking the derivative with respect to generalized coordinate x1. When we take the time derivative of t with respect to x1, we end up with m x1 double dot. And then there's a contribution from this term here. And that is equal to the minus in this case, oops, minus m over 2 times x 2 minus x1, and these will get double dots. Okay. Plus, from the potential energy, k1 x1 minus k2 x2 minus x1, and that will be equal to 0. We can simplify this as m plus little m over 2 times x1 double dot, minus m over 2 times x2 double dot, plus k1 plus k2 times x1, minus k2 x2 equals 0. That is your first equation of motion. We'll call that number 5. For the second equation of motion, we consider the coordinate x2. Taking the time derivative of t with res first of all, the derivative of t with respect to x2 and the time derivative of that gives us m x2 double dot. The contribution from this term gives us plus m over 2 x2 double dot minus x1 double dot. And then the contribution from V of that term gives us plus k2 times x2 minus x1. And that is all equal to 0. A bit of simplification here gives us m plus m over 2 is 3m over 2. Oh, let me just rewrite that. 3m over 2 times x2 double dot minus m over 2 times x1 double dot uh, plus k2 x2 minus k2 x1 equals 0. And that's the second equation of motion. And we're done. What I'm going to do is rewrite this in matrix form, since it's a little more compact. That would look like m plus m over 2 minus m over 2 minus m over 2 and 3m over 2. That is your mass matrix, and that is multiplied by x1 double dot, x2 double dot. It's a vector. And then the stiffness matrix looks like K1 plus K2 minus K2 minus K2 and plus K2. This is multiplied by X1, X2. And that is equal to zero, actually zero vector. And there you have it. Those are your two equations of motion. Now, I should point out, had you, instead of using x2, decided to use theta or delta, your equations of motion would have looked different from the form that I've presented here. It doesn't make it wrong. Uh, it's just describing a slightly different coordinate system. Anyway, I hope you found something of value in this. If you have, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up so others can get to see it too. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch up with you in the next video.